Why are you coming to school? 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 Why are you coming to
what the point of our criticism was. It was after having given that speech, by the next year, the speech was off your website. By the next year, you were telling reporters that you agreed with President Bush in his conduct right. of the war. And by the next year, when you were in the Senate, you were voting to fund the war time after time after time. Right. So it was more about the distinction between words and action. And I right. think that is a fair right. assessment for Thank voters you, to make. Senator, uh, we are a little off top. Now, let's talk about Ronald Reagan. What you just repeated here today is patent. Well, Wait, you know, no, Hillary, Robert, you just I did not, spoke, I did not say anything about minutes. Ronald Reagan. You said two you do, things. You, you talked spoke. about admiring Hillary, Ronald Reagan, sorry, and you talked about you, you the ideas spoke, of the Senator, Republicans. Senator, I didn't talk about Hillary, Ronald Reagan. We just had the tape. You just said that I complimented the Republican ideas. That is not true. What I said, and I will provide you with a quote. What I said was, is that Ronald Reagan was a transformative political figure because he was able to get Democrats to vote against their economic interests to form a majority to push through their agenda, an agenda that I objected to because while I was working on those streets, watching those folks see their jobs shipped overseas, you were a corporate lawyer sitting on the board of Walmart. I was fighting these fights. I was fighting these fights. So, but I want to be clear. So, so I, so I want to be clear. What I said had nothing to do with their policies. I spent a lifetime fighting against Ronald Reagan's policies. But what I did say is that we have to be thinking in the same transformative way about our democratic agenda. We've got to appeal to independents and Republicans in order to build a working majority to move an agenda forward. That is what I said. Now, you can dispute that, but let me, let me finish. Hillary, you went on for two minutes. Let me finish. The irony of this is that you provided much more fulsome praise of Ronald Reagan in a book by Tom Brokaw that's being published right now. As did, Bill, as did Bill Clinton in the past. So these are the kinds of political games that we are accustomed to. I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Just a minute. Let that wrap up, then I'm going to come to you. I just want to clarify. I want to clarify the record. Wait a minute. Wait a second, Senator Edwards. Hold on. A specific. There has been a specific charge leveled against Hillary Clinton, so she can respond. Then I'll bring in Senator. I just want to be sure. We got a long time to go. You'll have a good opportunity. We're just getting warmed up. Now, I just, I just want to be clear about this. In an editorial board with the Reno newspaper, you said two different things because I have read the transcript. You talked about Ronald Reagan being a transformative political leader. I did not mention his name. You, well, I'm here. He's okay, not. Okay, well, and I can't tell who I'm running against sometimes. Know, well, you know, about the Republicans having ideas over the last 10 to 15 I years. Say there were good ones. Well, you can read the context of it. Well, it certainly I didn't came say across. There were good ones. In, well, it certainly right, well, well, it certainly well. came across in the way that it was presented as oh, the Republicans had been standing up against the conventional wisdom with their ideas. I'm just reacting to the fact, yes, they did have ideas and they were bad ideas, right, bad right. for America and I was fighting against those ideas when you were practicing law and representing your contributor, Resco, in his slum landlord business in inner city Chicago. <laughs>
they tell you that, yes, but if people got things without money for nothing, that will kill incentive, getting things for nothing. Were you born in America? Yes. Were you? Okay. Just being born in America, you got the railway, the airplane, mm -hmm. electric, electric lights, the telephone. I don't think you had anything to do with them. Mm -hmm. All right, you got all that for nothing. Does it spoil you? Of course not. Think about it. Anybody born in any advanced country gets the railway, telephone, musical instruments, radio, all for nothing. That doesn't spoil you. Millions of cars sitting in front of factories for eight hours. In the future, you don't own anything. They're there for your use. When people come out of the factory, they take the cars. You don't have freight trains and freight yards where you say, I hope next month business is good enough to use all those freight trains. You have a lot of empty trucks. Very inefficient. The system wastes resources all over the world, particularly armies and navies. You can't use them for anything else. He worked technically as to what the future could be like. His architecture is not just an architecture to his own eagle, ego, excuse me, but social architecture to show how you can build total city systems that are efficient, clean, and produce abundance for people. That's criteria, among other things. So it's a totally different way of thinking, totally different way of building, if we, if we want to make it into the future at all. It wouldn't take long. No, I'm, not talking, I'm not interested in anything 500 years from now. I'm interested in the next five, 10 years. So our system could, could have been applied in 1927. We could have made the earth a beautiful garden. All our cities, they have no parks. The whole city is a park, beautiful trees, lakes, waterfalls. It, we don't even know the fantastic things the future will produce. It's going to be so fantastic that today, the middle class Americans live better than kings. They have cell phones, television in their car, air conditioning. No king ever had that. But if you ever turn science loose, give labs whatever the hell they need instead of nickels and dimes for heart disease. You understand? You use the polar regions to store surplus food, the North and South Pole. Dehydrate it so you get more food. So if there's an earthquake in Japan, you don't go to school and say, give us uh, a can of beans or a box of oatmeal. You have access immediately and you can solve those problems. So even the wealthiest of today would have a much higher standard of living within a resource-based economy. It's not for uh, poor handouts, so they just live. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a very rich economy for everyone. We do have more than enough resources. Though our political and social institutions have not changed, because we always equate any new idea with communism, because we've been brought up to fear that which is new. As soon as we make up our minds, to put scientists rather than on weapons, nerve gas, on harnessing the earth power that is already here. It would take 10 years to change the surface of the earth, to rebuild the world into a second garden of Eden, to save our country, to save our environment, to save our youth, our stupidity, our conflict. The choice lies with you. We don't have the money nor the type of mentality required to save our society in politics or government. I am not your enemy. I am not trying to destroy things. I do not believe in revolution. I believe that ideas must be presented to American people. They have to make the decision. It's not about new cities or new architecture. It's about a way of thinking. 